The x and y intercepts are important points that show us where we intersect the x axis and where we intersect the y axis. So with x intercepts, that's where we're going to cross the x axis, and that occurs when y is equal to zero. So you're going to end up with this coordinate where you have a value for x, and then y has to be zero. Then similarly with the y intercept, that's where we intersect the y axis. And that occurs, sorry, there's an extra letter there. It occurs when x is equal to zero, and we give that by the coordinate where x is zero, and then y is a number. So looking at a graph here, and just to kind of make this more bold so you can see it, so vertically there's our y-axis, and then horizontally our x-axis. So for our y-intercept, that's up here, and then our x-intercept is down here, crossing the x-axis. So for the x-intercept, we're going to have a value for x, which would be a positive 2 based on that scale, and then y is 0, so we're not moving vertically at all, we're only moving horizontally. And the y-intercept is we won't have anything for x, so we're not moving left or right at all, but we moved up four units. So that would make our x-intercept and y-intercept. And these points are nice because they're somewhat easier to calculate when you're just trying to find coordinates, which we'll see in this next example down here. Um, in word problems, they're really nice because typically you want to know, like if you're measuring two things, what happens when you don't have one of them and that's the idea of zero so you can see w what the balance would be if you have none of one thing what does that do to the other all right for this next example so y intercept would be down here and the x intercept where we're crossing the x axis so for the x intercept we move to the right two so we'd have a positive two and then zero for y for the y-intercept, we have nothing for x, but for y, we have a negative 1. So that's visually how we can see the x and y-intercepts from a graph. Finding them, given an equation. So first, let's find the x-intercept. So this is where y is equal to 0, and that's what we want to use. We want to plug in 0 for y. So I'm going to have 2 times x, because I need to find what x is, minus 4 times, and then where y is, I'm going to stick a 0, equals 8, and we're going to solve for x. So what's nice about solving with these is usually when you plug in 0, stuff kind of disappears, it evaporates. So having that negative 4 times 0, well that's just 0. So on the left hand side here, really all that I have is a 2x, and then equals 8. Then I'll divide both sides by 2, and that gives me x equals 4. So here I have this coordinate, x is 4, y is 0, and that's my x-intercept. For the y-intercept, it's the same idea, it's just that we're going to plug in x equals 0. So we'll have 2 times, and then we'll have 0, minus 4 times y equals 8. 2 times 0 is just 0, so that part's going to disappear, and we'll just have negative 4y equals 8. Divide by negative 4, and that's a negative 2. So I'll have a y-intercept of x is 0, y is negative 2. All right, so with that we can start to graph. So here I can see my x and y axes already set up. And then I just need to create a scale. These are pretty small numbers, so I'm just going to use a scale of 1. So 4, 0, so x is 4, and then y is 0, so there's my x-intercept, and then y of 0, negative 2, and then we just connect those together. Now to make sure this is correct, I just need to do that. Um, this is where plugging in a third point can be helpful to make sure that this is accurate. 
So maybe what I could do is I see this coordinate here. We should have this coordinate positive 2, negative 1. So maybe I'll just do this check of what happens when x is positive 2. So let's see, 2 times 2 minus 4 times y. And I could even plug in the y value. We could do that as the check. I know that I should have a y of negative 1. So let's do that and see if it balances out. So 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. So we have a 4 plus 4. 8 equals 8. And that works great. So this is just to double check that we do have that coordinate. And it's nice to choose something in between, but really we could have chosen any of these points out here also um, just to see if this is working. Just because when you only use two coordinates, you're really relying on those being calculated correctly. So a third point will just verify that if that is part of the line, then that line is working correctly. Changing to slope intercept form to, uh, or rather there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, if you have the equation, so we have something that's in standard form. So two X minus four Y equals eight. All we need to do is solve for Y. Because the idea of slope intercept form is that you have Y all alone on one side of the equation. So solving for y, I need to get this 2x away. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I have this negative 4y equals 8 minus 2x. And then I need to divide everything by negative 4. And what you need to do on this right-hand side where we have two terms being separated by subtraction, every term needs to be divided by that negative 4. So that 8 is going to be divided by negative 4, and so is the 2x. So on the left hand side, negative 4 divided by negative 4 is just a positive 1, so that will be y. 8 divided by negative 4 is a negative 2. And then negative 2 divided by negative 4, so that's going to be a positive. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half, and then that's multiplying with x. And now we have our slope intercept form. So our constant is that negative 2, slope is the 1 half. So to check it, what we could do is go to our graph. So we should have the point 0, negative 2 being graphed, which we do for our y-intercept. And then a slope of positive 1 half, so we move up 1 to the right 2. So let's just map that out, up 1 to the right 2, and that does follow our line correctly. So when you solve with this, you can double check by going to the graph and making sure that you do have the correct y-intercept and it maps correctly using the slope.